Uh, I, as the players know, I was concerned coming into the weekend. We'd been on the road. We had midterms. Um, but they had two uh, really good practices and then a walkthrough practice. And I think we saw that this weekend. We, um, I thought, overall played clean ball. To, to sweep both uh, St. John's and Seton Hall um, is really impressive. And I thought we did it in decisive fashion. I thought, you know, we got a little bit sloppy at a couple times in game two and three. And actually in game one, a couple points. But I thought overall a really good night. Um, really impressed with that we sided out 100% uh, in game three. That's, I don't know if I've ever had a team that's done that. So um, I wish they hadn't sided out at 70%, but uh, liked what we did there. And, and I like the depth of our team. A lot of people came in and played and did a great job. Um, but now we got to move forward. You know, we've got our, probably our toughest road weekend of the season in front of us. So we got to get back in the gym and get better and look forward to the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I think these are good teams. I I, um, I know that they become better teams on their home court. So um, these seemed easy, I think, from the outside. Um, and they probably didn't challenge us as much as we've been challenged on the road. Um, but I can tell you, Butler had us uh, on the ropes in two games there. Xavier had us on the ropes. Um, Marquette is always formidable. Um, I think we played well. We put pressure on these guys. and. Did they put us in com uncomfortable situations? Probably not as much as some teams, but we've definitely felt a lot in the Big East, and I can guarantee we'll feel on Friday night. How would you be compared to moving your mindset of the game after this last uh, conference play versus how the floor is going to your it? Say that again, Matt. The mood and mindset of your team after you know starting out 8 0. What do you see from them in the gym every day from how they approach practice versus how they were going to the conference play? Uh, you know, I don't think I've had moments where I felt like this team hasn't been committed and locked in and wanting to get better. Um, so I, I feel like we've improved. So I think that's good. Um, perhaps there's more confidence. But I, I don't think that they, you'd have to speak to them. I don't feel like they went through non-con and didn't believe in what they were doing. We lost some heartbreakers. I think, if anything, we learned in non-con, hey, we are one of the top teams in the country when we play the way we're capable of playing. So. Um, where I've seen, I've said this before, where I've seen some growth in the last couple of weeks is endgame. I felt during the non-con we were not as poised at endgame as we needed to be, and I've seen us during the Big East season be in tough situations and handle that a lot better. And just even the, the way that we look on the court displays confidence of we're going to get this side out or we're going to score behind the line when it's important. And I think that's where I think a lot of growth has come. Coach, you only dropped two sets in all of uh, Big East conference play. How have you guys been so efficient in the way you guys have been winning? I think uh, it's probably one of the most mature teams that we've had. Um, that they, you know, there's there's the RPI and then there's Pablo, which is a ranking system. Pablo pays attention to how you beat teams, and we are by far uh, the highest Pablo ranking ranking that we've had because of what you're talking about. That we aren't giving up stupid points. We're not giving up a random game or, here, game or two here, which historically sometimes we've done that. Maybe we'd win in four rather than three. Um, and I, you know, I think that they get it. I think you've got seniors and juniors that understand the importance of um, every point, every practice. And um, you know, we talk about that a lot, but I think we're reaping the benefits of that a little bit. I mean, like, a big thing is for, like, to come in fresh every single practice. And, like, even if you may not be on the starting side, like, you're still on the scout side. And you want to challenge the starting side and get them as going as best. So when you're trying to challenge the starting side, you kind of reap some benefit, too, because you get to go up against the best players. And also, you're trying to keep in play, and you want to stay in there, too. So I would definitely say throw it to my teammates because they're they've been awesome through it all, and they definitely bring in anybody who subs in. They're gonna embrace it and really help you out. And the bench cheers you on extra. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Coach, the, the blocking uh, has been great all weekend. I know you kind of paid a little extra attention to it in practice. Mm -hmm. What's going on? I mean, what's changed? And if Marissa could also add to that. Uh, you know, I think. You know, weekly as a staff, we try to sit down and say, where do we have to get better? In the last couple of weeks, we've sat down and said, we've got to get better at blocking if we want to um, 
you know, and I, we'll continue to make that a priority, but it, it is nice to see them reap the benefits of the work. You know, we've, we've keyed into all the blockers, but I would say particularly our left side block in particular, um, we've spent a lot of time and um, I think, again, you know, Jaylee's numbers in the last two nights weren't incredible, but her touches were. And, you know, ace blocks are great, but as they know, we're talking about good soft touches that we can dig behind. That's a great, that's a great block too. Um, so, you know, I, it was fun to see a lot of progress. Marissa's become just an incredible blocker um, this past year. And I think part of it is she's just physically stronger. She's jumping higher. Um, you know, you can speak to your, your blocking progression and how you've improved. Um, yeah, I just know it's always been a big part of our program to have good blocking. And, of course, I want to be a part of that. And when we do have, like, the good blocking that we do, um, it helps our offense, off, like, a lot better. Because um, we have good offensive parity, and when we get those block touches, it makes it a lot easier to do the dig transition that we need. And we win more games with them. Mm -hmm. Aiden, that was obviously great, but how important was 2 and 0 this weekend heading into, obviously, you mentioned Friday, and, and you're not home again, I think, until November 4th? Right. Um, you know, and I, I know this sounds like coach speak, but I really believe this. Each match is the most important of the season, you know, and so we talk about that with the team. So, you know, obviously winning on your home court is important, um, but, you know, we're fighting to host, you know, so it's we want to win a Big East championship. We want to make the NCAA tournament, but we want to host, and um, we need to win matches, not only win matches, we need to win them decis decisively, and it's tough in the Big East. I mean, you've got – really eight teams, what we're seeing, although one of those teams that's in the bottom two, it looks like they might make an upset today. So you've got incredible parity amongst the Big East and everyone's kind of beating up on each other. And, you know, as the players know, if we don't show up, we're going to lose. I guess for you two then, I mean, as a player, you know you want to go out and win, but when you hear that you need to do it decisively, um, does, does that add any kind of dynamic for you guys or do you just really need to focus on your play? I think it's more of we just want to play clean volleyball, and when we do play clean volleyball, that's when we're going to win decisively. So we just want to limit our errors and play the best that we can play and put it all out, and then that will result in winning decisively. So it doesn't put too much pressure. Perfect. Well said. Yeah, I agree with Tessa. <laughs> <laughs>